And now we have our very own Anne Kempster, who's going to talk to you about subgenres in post-apocalyptic science fiction. Uh, I'm basically outing myself in my mouth. We already knew that. Okay. Uh, this is the moment, oops, where I really wish I had prepared more. Um, right, this is not scientific in any way. This is basically an excuse for me to talk about post-apocalyptic science fiction. I read a lot of it. I watch a lot of it. It basically is like what I'm interested in. Um, so I've kind of broken this down into um, sort of vague themes, um, and it's also slightly a book report, the whole thing. So, um, so the first one it sort of can be categorized as man-made. Um, and, of course, we have the zombocalypse as the sort of classic example of that, and we all know zombies are the big thing at the moment. Um, I think you could, you know, you could go further with the whole zombocalypse thing and zombies and break that down. You've got your slow zombies, you've got your fast zombies. Um, <laughs> where is the sort of zombie literature that talks about the fact that um, sort of the idea of a zombie is even acknowledged? Because most of the movies you see, most of the zombie stuff you read, they have no idea that they're zombies that they're dealing with. What world do they live in? <laughs> Um, and then we come on to things like nuclear holocaust. So some examples of this, you have uh, sort of the classic things like threads, sort of recent things like the Book of Eli, um, City of Ember, The Road, which is both a book and a movie, um, sort of other books like Ridley Walker, uh, something else that I read recently called the Fuse, called Fuse, and it's a trilogy. Um, it, it's quite a sort of, it's one of the big sort of subgenres, I think, nuclear holocaust-related apocalypses. Um, and we come on to the nanopocalypse, as I called it. I um, was doing some quick Wikipedia research on this, actually, before I came, and it's actually the idea of nanobots and all this, it's sort of traced it back to the 1880s, which I thought was quite interesting. Um, so there's a few things that have been written, some stuff that I've read, um, the Plague War trilogy by Jeff Carlson, Neil Stevenson has done some stuff, uh, it's been sort of featured a little bit in a few movies, um, I think that one may be a growing subgenre. Uh, then we come on to disease, which I suppose you could put things like the Zombocalypse into that if you think it was a man-made disease. Um, but you also have movies like The Andromeda Strain. Um, did I write there? <laughs> Uh, okay. Um, something else that I just read recently where a guy goes to Australia, he um, wakes up in the morning and basically everyone's caught this virus and they're all dead, um, except for him and a few other people. So you've got sort of that angle on it. Um, I think I've read some other things where um, there have been other viral type things that cause women to become infertile and there's no more children, blah, 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 it goes on. Um, and then you've got your classic last man on earth type thing. Um, and I'd be quite interested to know if anyone has actually come across any last women on earth or sort of something other than the standard <laughs> last man on earth thing. Um, the next would be um, environmental catastrophes, which I think, again, we can break down. So things like drought, and I think uh, J.G. Ballard has written something around this. Um, also, if we come on to ice, um, nothing is coming off the top of my head on that one, but I know I have read some things where there are ice worlds, post-apocalypse <laughs> stuff. Okay, think about things like the day after tomorrow. There's an idea of that. Um, you have the drowned world, um, the ideas of floods. So you have, again, uh, J.G. Ballard in classic A Drowned World. Um, and that amazing, not amazing in any way, shape, or form, Kevin Costner movie from the <laughs> 19th <laughs> world. Um, and then we have the alien invasion. I think you have to be really careful with the alien invasion movie because a lot of them are actually, I think, more disaster sort of hero movies rather than what we, how we live in a world post-apocalypse of an alien invasion. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, basically, why do I love it? And I do. Um, I think you get the good and the bad, and it's that bit in the middle, that something else, where people sort of see that you take a side or sort of come up with a new way forward for humanity. Um, and I think there's, there's reoccurring themes of destruction, reconstruction, and hope, um, which I think are quite fascinating and interesting subjects. And that is me. Woo!